In today's video at Medical Sciences, I want to discuss viral replication. I want to see how do viruses replicate or increase in number in the host cell. After acquiring a virus, how does it multiply in number so that it can overcome the body immune system? And there are several steps under viral replication where some give, books give six, others give eight depending on the book you are reading. But for us in today's session, we want to look at se seven steps which occur during viral replication. And the first step is attachment, whereby the virus attaches itself on the host cell. And after attaching, we shall see how does it penetrate the host cell membrane to reach into the cytoplasm of the cell. And after reaching there, how does it uncoat? to release the genome. We remem you remember in the previous video we have seen viruses, the genome is protected by the capsid. So how does the capsid uncoat to release the genome? Then we shall look at replication or biosynthesis. How do we multiply these after being released in the genome? How does it multiply to form many copies? Then we shall see also translation whereby after replication and transcription, we shall see how the mRNA form is translated to form structural proteins and functional proteins. Then we shall assemble the, the genome together with the translated structural protein by the process known as assembly to form a complete virion which can be released. So as we begin with, we are beginning with step number one, which is attachment. Attachment and under attachment, different viruses, depending on the nature, we see enveloped viruses, they use, for example, HIV virus uses, it, it, it utilizes, it attacks the CD4 cells by using CCR5 and CXCR4. So these are the, these ones are the things that it uses for attachment together with glycoprotein 24. But this one plays a big role in penetration. So we are going to see CCR5 and CXCR4 enabling the attachment of an HIV virus. Whereas for example, for influenza, for influenza virus, it utilizes sialic acid. Sialic acid, which is a carbohydrate component that enables this virus. So we're going to see this virus attaching to the membrane of the host cell. And for the HIV case, this host cell is the CD4 cell, whereby it uses the CCR5 to attach itself on the membrane. And after attaching on the membrane, it is going to lead us to step number two. It is going to, step to lead us to step number two, which is viral penetration. This is penetration. And under penetration, we want to see how does the virus penetrate or cross the cell membrane, or what we call entry. So penetration, we can call it entry of the virus into the host cell. So different viruses use different components to enter into the host cell. For example, the HIV virus uses glycoprotein. For the HIV virus, it utilizes glycoproteins. And glycoproteins such as glycoprotein 24 to attach, whereby it uses it to fuse, whereby it fuses with the membrane, and the process it enters in the cell is by is known as fusion. So HIV virus enters by fusion, whereas other viruses like influenza, like influenza virus and others, the pox virus, enter by 
cell mediated cell mediated cell mediated endocytosis that is the process so we are saying the hiv virus if this is my hiv virus after attaching using ccr5 it uses another glycoprotein known as glycoprotein 24 to enter or to penetrate into the cell Whereas others, like influenza virus, when it comes, it, it fuses, it uh, forms what we call a, an endosome. And this endosome will attach itself together with the virus and it will enter by endocytosis, whereby we shall see the virus entering within the vesicle. That is what we are calling cell-mediated endocytosis, whereby the cell will form a false mouth forms a false, false mouth and after forming this false mouth where the virus is here is here then this virus is able to enter by endocytosis so that is another way one way is fusion by most of my special like hiv virus another one is cell mediated endocytosis so these are those are the forms we can discuss how viruses are able to enter into the host cell. And after entering in the host cell, if this HIV virus fuses and it has entered in the host cell, this is the virus which has entered in the host cell together with its capsid. But as it is entering, the HIV virus is no longer having the envelope. The envelope was enabling it to enter. Afterwards, it is destroyed by the endonucleases. We remain with the capsid and with then this capsid has what we call the virus genome inside. So and this one will lead us to step number three, which is uncoating. When we have the genome inside, it has to uncoat. And how does it uncoat? It utilizes this is step number three, which is uncoating. Whereby this uncoating, the virus surrounded by the capsid, it releases the genome. Here it is the release of the, of the genome from the capsid. From the capsid. And this method, the methods that utilize this, it can either be due to host enzymes, action of host enzymes like proteases that come and digest this protein coat, which you call the capsid. Or sometimes some viruses have also enzymes. Sometimes it can be viral enzymes. So these are the, way, the, the, the mechanisms they can use, either the host enzyme dissolving or digesting the capsid or the viral enzyme, which enables it after being digested by the host proteases, then the genome is released into the cytoplasm of the cell. So we release the genome, which can either be DNA or, or RNA. After being released, then it is transported into the nucleus. This is the nucleus of the cell. And after reaching within the nucleus, this viral genome is going to undergo replication. So this one will lead us to a Step number four, which is genome replication. Genome replication. And genome replication, it occurs in the nucleus, whereby the virus incorporates itself. For example, the HIV virus, inside the nucleus, there is an integrase enzyme. And this integrase, it integrates so it joins the, the the genome of the virus into the host dna as the host is replicating its dna also the virus is replicated but for bigger viruses like poxivirus for them replication occurs within the cytoplasm so genome replication here we are forming many copies here we are producing 
is production of many copies. Production of, of viral copies, viral genome copies. And after producing these many copies, they, after being replicated, they are transcribed, they undergo transcription and to form mRNA, messenger RNA, by the process known as transcription. So after dividing the genome, if we had one genome like this, it's going to, to be replicated to form many copies. This one also undergoes replication. This one undergoes replication. We keep multiplying them to form many viral copies. And this process is what we call replication. And after being replicated, then we transcribe to form messenger RNA of this virus genome. And this messenger RNA is the one that is going to be utilized under translation to form, these are many, we have formed many copies, many copies of the virus, and we have also produced the messenger RNA and this messenger RNA is the one that is going to be utilized under step number five, which is translation. Translation. So here we have formed the many copies. And these copies need proteins so that they can be assembled. So we utilize the messenger RNA by the process known as transcription in the presence of ribosome in the cytoplasm, they are, they are translated. They are translated. After being translated, we form structural and functional proteins. We form structural and functional. Proteins. So when we are here, we are seeing this genome under replication, it comes and is incorporated or it is integrated within the host DNA and it is replicated to form multiple copies. Here by replication, we form multiple copies. At the same time, we shall produce messenger RNA, which moves into the cytoplasm where there is ribosome. These are the ribosomes and this mRNA produced is going to be trans undergo translation is undergoes translation to form proteins. So we have formed many copies of the virus. At the same time, we have translated it to form proteins, structural proteins. And these proteins will be the capsids. Those are the structure and function. So here it is a capsid. Capsid of the virus, and remember the capsid was in this format, so we shall to produce the same as commanded by mRNA. So we have the proteins and we have the copies. So what is going to happen is assemble. We have to assemble. So this one will lead us to what we call assembly, whereby we are going to assemble the genome together with the capsid or the proteins to form a fully-fledged video. So after translation and replication together with the transcription, we are going to go to step number six, which is assembly. Assembly of the virus, whereby under assembly, we get the genome copies formed. Then we assemble them together with the structure and functional proteins in the cytoplasm to form a new to form video to form a video so that is by assembly so we are going to assemble whereby we bring the capsid of the virus then we come and assemble it together to add a genome another genome is here we add assemble with the capsid Another one, another capsid is here. We add 
the genome. So this is what we are calling assembly. And after assembling, to form numerous virions, then the last step will be raised. The last step will be raised of the virion or a virus, whereby after assembling different virions in the cytoplasm of the host cell, they have to live and attach to other new to, to attach new cells so they can continue multiplying. And the process of host cell of rays, it can it, it occurs in two processes whereby one is exocytosis. One sometimes we can call they are exocytosed by either lysis or budding. And the lysis, if it is, if the viruses are released by breakdown of the cell, this one leads to the death of the host cell. So even the host cell dies because when this cell rises to release these virions into the surrounding to attach to new host cells, now the whole cell is frost. It dies. And the example of viruses that are released by lysis is like HIV. That's why we see whenever we are monitoring, we do CD4 count because whenever the viruses leave the host cell, they leave it when it is dead due to release by lysis. Whereas those ones that read by, that they live by budding, for them they do not cause the death of the cell, but they read it what we call CPEs. CPE is what we know as cytopathic effects on the cell. They cause cytopathic effects. That is how viruses. So we can either release whereby it buds here, if this is a, vi a virion, which is here, this cell membrane buds out. Buds out together with this virion, and then it busts the surrounding, and this one joins again. So this one maintains the integrity of the cell, which is different from lysis, whereby this cell is broken down and we lose all of the intracellular content. So this is what we can discuss in the DNA in viral replication, where we have looked at attachment, penetration, or entry of the virus. And we have seen different modes of entry. We have seen an coating and which is aided by the enzymes. Then we have seen genome biosynthesis or replication, whereby we produce many copies. And at the same time, we, it undergoes transcription. The copies remain in the DNA, in the nucleus. Then we also go in the cytoplasm and we form, we form other pro structural proteins and functional proteins by the process known as translation. And after being translated, then we assemble. And after assembly, we are able to release these viruses by either lytic mob process or budding process. Thank you so much for learning from the beginning until the end. May God bless you.